All right, welcome back. Uh, this application we're gonna build now, and we're continuing on with our introductory module here, we're going to build a basic calculator and just a simple plus minus multiply and divide, clear and equal sign, so like nine uh, plus six equals 15, hit clear, uh, three times five equals 15, you know, stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a fresh project. So either launch Xcode and come to a brand new project and come to a window like this where, where you're able to select the template for your project. Or if you already have Xcode open, you just do file, new, and then project is right there. So I already have it open. So I'm gonna say iOS single view app and hit next. And I'm gonna call this uh, my calc. All right, and we talked about everything that was here already. So I'll just hit next and give it a home. All right. And so we won't worry about any project settings. There's nothing major here that we have to worry about. So uh, we won't worry about any extra libraries, orientation, nothing like that. We just jump right into building our calculator. So we'll start with launch screen. And like last time we talked about the launch screen being our splash screen here. I'll just put a little label that says loading, just like last time in our last application. So load, uh, so label is what I'll search for. Just bring it in. And put the word loading. So remember that once you have something highlighted here, you go to the attributes inspector, which is this fourth option here on the right, and look for the word label, change the word label to loading. And you can center it, play with the font. I won't play with the font here. I'll just increase it just for readability. And we're using an iPhone 8, so I gotta make sure that my simulator reflects that. So simulator will be iPhone 8 as well. I'm gonna move to main storyboard now. And in main storyboard, I'm gonna put a label at the top, just the title. And it'll say my calculator. So I'll say my calculator and center that. You can change the font. Maybe I'll, go, maybe I'll add some color to it. Red, sure. Add another label. This label will be for displaying digits. So I'm gonna put that there and I'll right justify it. For uh, design purposes, you should really line things up nicely for consistency. Of course, for functionality-wise, you want to have as many digits as you can. But for this, uh, this is good enough. And you typically are expected to put the zero there. For my implementation here, we're going to just leave the zero to, to code. So we'll leave the word label here just to illustrate, a, to illustrate something uh, later on. Now, the rest of the calculator will involve buttons. So we'll search for a button. And I'm gonna make the button 75 by 75. Now I'm gonna have like a grid setup of buttons. So four by four, kind of like a typical calculator. And I want them to be the equal size and equal spacing. So I could size it up just by dragging out. But what's nice about Xcode is we have the size inspector, which is the fifth option up here where my mouse is. If I click on that, having my button highlighted like it is right now, I can go down to width and height and change it. You can also change X, Y, but I want to change width and height and make it 75 by 75. So I have my exact dimensions that I care about. Nice square. And I can move it around and just place it nicely. Because what I want to do is I want to have the same button. And I could just drag 16 buttons out here, but I already have a button here. The nice thing is I can do copy and paste. And for those of you that are, on, that are from in the Windows world, you would use control C and control V and control X to co cut, copy and paste. Uh, we can do the same thing with the command key on the Mac. So uh, we'll do a command C to copy that and a command V to paste and it's paste the duplicate. So you can just drag that around and line up nicely. Command V again, I'll put another button there. And command V one more. I'm gonna give a little gap for this third one just to illustrate that it is a operation button. Now, I want to have three more rows of this exact thing. So what I can do is I can actually you know, click away somewhere on the screen and then just drag to highlight 
all four buttons. Do a Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and it's pasted the entire row. I can carefully maneuver all the buttons at the same time. Click away, Command V, and I'll drag. And one more time, Command V to drag. All right, so I have 16 buttons. So let's go ahead and edit every button, starting with the what label is supposed to go on. So I'm going to start here in the top corner. I want this to be 7, 8, and 9, and a plus sign. So highlighting that first button in the corner, I'll go to my Attributes Inspector, change the word button to 7. Next to it will be 8. nine and plus and four five and six and a minus And then one, two, and three. And a multiply. Now the bottom row, first button will be C for clear. Zero. then equal sign, and then last one will be a slash for divide. And so now we have our entire UI set up and ready to go. But what we saw in the last application we built was that we created one event handler for one button. Now you may wonder, well, am I going to create 16 event handlers for 16 buttons? And the answer is no. We don't have to. We can create one common event handler for we, or for the number buttons and a, an event handler for the operations and an event handler for equals and an event handler for clear. You know, so we can, we can group things together. But the event handler will need to know what was pressed. And the nice thing is in the attributes, there is an option called tag. It's a numerical item. So we can give it a new, we can give each uh, each item a number value. So it'll be like an identifier. What I want to do for the number buttons, like zero is and and so on, is to keep it to be the same number that it's here. So I'll start with seven in the corner. I make the tag seven. Button eight will be tag eight. Button nine will be tag nine. Button four, accordingly, you get the idea. Now, for clear and equal sign, We'll make clear minus 2 and equal sign minus 1. And for plus, minus, multiply, and divide, we'll make those 10, 11, 12, 13. So 10, 11, 12, And 13. So we're going to have those tags. And actually, we're going to use those numbers in our code as well. So now at this point, we're done with our UI. You can test it out using an iPhone 8 if you haven't already done so, hitting play and seeing what it looks like. So 
that I'm loading, or my calculator, but nothing is happening here. So that's fine. So now our next step is to move on to our view controller code. So viewcontroller.swift and seeing uh, what we can do here to add some life to this calculator. So when we switch over to viewcontroller.swift, uh, we see the same stuff we saw before in the last exercise. So we have class view controller extends you have view controller. We have a method view did load. It's a constructor for our app in a nutshell. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by defining some variables. So I want to hard code some variables associated with the operations. So plus, minus, multiply, and divide. So I'm going to start by saying let plus equal the same number that I had before for my tag, so 10 let minus equal 11 let multiply equal 12 and let divide equal 13 same numbers that I have as my tags and there's a reason for that now I need an outlet to connect to my label for the digits so that label that's going to show me what digits have been pressed. So I'm going to say IB outlet var lbl text extends UI label exclamation mark. Now I need some variables to track the actual operation of what I'm doing. So we need a number plus another number or minus another number. So we need two variables. So we'll say var num1, it'll be an ns integer, was we'll default at 0. Same with num2, so var num2, ns integer, set it equal to 0. Now we need something to track the operand, whether it be plus, minus, multiply, or divide, so we'll say var operand is also an ns integer, since those are ints anyway, we'll set it equal to 0. And we'll need something for the answer. So we'll say var answer. Well, you'd think it'd be an int, but it's not. It's going to be a double to support the divide. So we'll say it's a double. Set it equal to 0, 0. And we'll need one more variable. So we want to track the digits that were pressed. And every time we press a new digit, we want to add it on to the previous set of digits that were pressed. And the best variable I can think of is a string. So I'm going to say var, call it the number, extend string, set it equal to the letter 0. Notice I said the letter 0, or the text 0, whatever you want to call it. So we have all of our variables in place. Now, I want to make some initializations. So I'm going to use view did load. So nothing big. Maybe I'll I want to display what's on the number. Now, I'm going to be doing this over and over again. So I'll be updating the label over and over again. Maybe it'd be nicer to have a nice little method that'll do this for me. So before modifying view to load, I'm going to create a new function or new method. Say func, call it print number, no arguments. And inside print number, we'll say lbl text dot text is equal to the number. So it'll always update. Now in my view to load, I'll just call print number. So now let's create an event handler to support the uh, buttons, the, the numbers, 0 to 9, so those buttons in particular. So I'm going to say IB action func, and I'm going to call this press num. Argument inside will be sender. Now, last exercise I used any, which is a nice easy way to do it, but I know there will be UI buttons, so I'll just say UI button. 
Now you want to ensure that whatever is connected to this, it's only going to be with the tag number 0 to 9, because those, those are the digits we care about. So we, we set those tags inside the storyboard earlier. Now we're going to just double check. So we'll say if sender.tag is greater than or equal to 0 and sender.tag is less than or equal to 9, then we can go ahead and append the tag number to the number. So we'll say the number plus equals string of sender dot tag. And then update the label. So we'll just say print number. So every time a digit's pressed, it gets appended to the number. So it remembers the previously entered digits. And then you can print the, the number there. So now we have enough to test things out. What we have to do first, though, is connect this event handler to all of our numerical digit buttons and connect the label, the IB outlet above. And then we can go ahead and give it a run and see what happens. So we're going to switch over to main storyboard and highlight the yellow circle, which represents our view controller. So if I mouse over there, it says view controller. So highlight the yellow circle. And then you can go to your connections inspector, the last option up here. And first thing again, you'll see under outlets, all my variables, so IB outlets are here. So LBL text is here. So I'm going to mouse over the empty circle. It turns into a plus sign. Click, drag to the label label. So now this will always update that text that I need. At the bottom is my event handler. So it says press num with sender. So press num is the event handler we just created. So I'm going to mouse over the empty circle turns into a plus sign. I'm going to drag it, starting with the number 7. And I'll choose Touch Up Inside. And actually, I can mouse, even though it looks like it's filled, if I mouse over again, that filled circle turns into a plus sign anyway. So I can mouse over, it turns into a plus, click, drag to 8, Touch Up Inside, mouse over, turns into a plus to 9, Touch Up Inside, and do it for all the digits. Be careful not to choose touch up outside because that will mess you up and you'll have to X that out and do it again. Now if you do make a mistake, there's these little X's here. You can just mouse over and disconnect any one that you accidentally created incorrectly. And now let's give it a run. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And so now we've got the numerical digits up and running. So now the next step is to get the operations up and running, the plus, minus, multiply, and divide buttons that are right here. We're going to get those up and running. So to do that, we're going to create a new event handler to support these four buttons. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to viewcontroller.swift. And what we want to do is we want to create another method uh, just to save the digits that were pressed before moving on to the before the user moving on to creating uh, to entering a new number, so we're going to create another method just to save that first number. So we'll say func save num one, and inside of that, the number the variable will have all the digits that were pressed. So we want to convert that from a string into an int so we can save it as num one. So we'll say num one equals the number, but we need to cast it as an int. So it goes inside round brackets. So that's casting it. And we would think that we're done, but 
it's complaining. So the nice thing about Xcode is that if it doesn't, if it isn't happy with something, but it knows the answer, it'll tell you with this little white dot inside a red dot. So if it has a white dot here, if it's a yellow with a white dot in the middle, it's the same idea. You can click on it, and it'll say, well, you know, let's. Here's the issue. Here's what I suggest. So let's click Fix to apply it. So it just wants an exclamation mark. All right. Now that I have my number saved, I want to reset the number back to zero. So the number equals zero. And then print number, just so that the number is back on the screen. So zero. So now I have a way to save my number. What I want to do now is I want to save my operation. So I'm going to create an event handler. So I'll say IB action, I'll say func set operand, and we'll say sender is also a UI button. And this time the tags are between 10 and 13. So plus minus multiply and divide. So I want to check to see if it's within that area. So I'll say if sender.tag is greater than or equal to 10 and sender.tag is less than or equal to 13. Or I could have used plus and divide the variables we created earlier. That's correct as well. So if it is, let's set operand equal to sender.tag and call save num1. So now I have the ability to set the operation, save my number. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and do the calculation. Before then, we also have a clear button. So why don't we go ahead and do the clear button as well. And actually, instead of creating a separate event handler, why not just tie it into set operand? So here under set operand, I'll say if sender.tag equals minus two, then let's just reset. So the number equals zero and then print number. All right. So we got the clear button there as well. Now, last thing to take care of is the equal sign. So we're going to create another event handler to handle that. So I'll put that above here. So I'll say IB action func. I'm going to call it calculate. Sender will be a UI button as well. So now at this point, the user will have entered that second number. So what we want to do is we want to save that second number. So we'll say num2 equals int of the number. And it's going to ask for an exclamation mark. Now I want to check which operation was, was committed. So we'll say if operand equals plus then we'll do an answer equals num1 plus num2. But it's complaining. It's saying we cannot do this type of operation between integers and doubles. Let's see what the solution is suggesting. It's saying let's cast it to double. So there. So we'll do that for minus. So if operand equals minus, answer equals num1 minus num2. And it'll complain, so we'll cast it to double, just like before. If operand equals multiply, answer equals num1 times num2.
and divide. So if operand equals divide. num1 divided by num2. So it's suggesting double of num1 over num2. All right, so let's do a little bit of cleanup here. Reset everything, print everything to the screen, and connect everything up and run this. So we're going to reset stuff. So at this point, we've got our calculation. we got our answer. So we'll just reset things by saying num1 equals 0, num2 equals 0. Operand, we'll reset it to like plus, some default value the number will equal the answer. So we want to display answer on the screen. So we have to set it to the number and cast it as a string. We can go ahead and print number. But now that we're done, we can reset answer to 0, 0.0 and the number to zero. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see how this will work. So now we can switch back to main storyboard and connect up the remaining items. So I've got to click on yellow circle, and you'll see a couple of event handlers are added. So calculate with sender. So calculate is going to go to my equal sign. So touch up inside again. And then the other one is set operand. So for the remaining buttons, I'm going to connect it to set operand. I can go ahead and run now. It's now loading. I can try like a nine plus eight equals seventeen. Hit clear. Six minus nine is equal to negative three. Good, hit clear. 3 times 8 is 24, so that's good, hit clear. Now let's try 3 divided by 8 sets it to 0. Well, that doesn't sound right. Now, you're probably wondering, well, that's not 0, but in a way it kind of is to a computer. So there is an issue with our divide statement. So what we need to do is go back to our divide and see what went wrong here. So now Xcode was very helpful. It suggested that answer is equal to double of num1 divided by num2. But if I do num1 divided by num2, that's an integer divided by an integer. So it'll result in an integer answer. So 3 divided by 9 is actually 0, because it just drops the decimal space and everything on the other side. Even though you cast it as double, it's just saying 0 becomes 0.0. .0. We have to use it to cast the individual numbers separately first. So double of num1 divided by double of num2. If you try that again, this will be 3 divided by 8 equals, there we go. So we have that. But what if we do a 3 divided by 0? Set it equal to infinity. Now, sure, that's good. That's a nice way to take care of a divide by 0. But in older iOS versions, they would, ca cra uh, they would ca cause an app crash. And that's not nice. So we maybe want to support those older versions of iOS just to ensure that 
you know, we don't have an app crash in this case. So let's put up an alert box that, pro that tells the user that, hey, you cannot divide by zero and doesn't allow them to complete the operation. So let's add one final thing here to this application. So looking at our if statement for divide, we're going to check to see if num2 is zero. So we'll say if num2 equals zero, it will do something. Otherwise, we'll do this answer. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to add an alert box that will display an error message. So there's a four step process to displaying an alert box. The first step is to, to create the alert box itself. The second step is to create the buttons for the alert box. The third step is to join the alert box to the buttons. And then the fourth step is to display the alert box. So the first step is to instantiate an alert box object. So we're going to say let alert equal UI alert controller. Now if I open a round bracket, I want that third uh, construct, the third uh, method def here. So title, message, and style. So title will just say error. Message cannot divide by zero. And the third argument is what kind of alert box is this? What they did was they streamlined the alert box with the action sheet object. The action sheet slides up from the bottom, very similar code to the alert box that pops up. Now we want to display an alert box. So we're going to say dot alert. And in this language, there's a lot of inferencing. So we know that it's going to be some object dot alert that it's expecting. So we can just say dot alert. So now the next step is to create the alert box, sorry, the button for the alert box. So I want to have a cancel button. So I'm going to say let cancel action equal UI alert action. Open up a round bracket. And that's the, uh, that's the method def I want. So title will be cancel. Style will be what kind of button is this? There's really two options, really. It's either a cancel button or it's what's called a default button or just a button, regular button. So I want this to be a cancel button. So I'm going to say dot cancel. The third argument we're going to set to nil. Now, this is used for when you want to have an action performed upon clicking on that button, which we'll do on a future application. But for now, we'll just set it to nil. We don't want to have any handler code there. Third step, join the button to the alert box. So we'll say alert dot add action for cancel action. Finally, let's display this alert box. So we'll say present alert and we'll add a little bit of animation. So we'll say animated is true. Barely, barely see it, but it'll be there. So now our divide is complete. Now we actually have an alert box to test to see if it's uh, divide by zero. Otherwise, do the operation. So let's run this. All right, so let's do three divided by zero equals, oh, error, cannot divide by zero. You hit cancel. So there you go. So let's recap. What we built here is we built our, uh, another sort of hello world type application, a calculator for, in our, for our intents and purposes in Swift. The idea was just get familiar with Swift code, learn how to build an application, incorporate event handlers, uh, streamline event handlers. So having common event handlers execute with one event handler all joined together and pop up an alert box. So now you're ready to move on to another application, which we'll see in our next uh, video.